Small Nuclear Power Plants, SMRs for short, which stands for Small Modular Reactors, are becoming an increasingly important topic. The US, China and companies such as Amazon and Google are investing more and more in this technology for a very specific reason. Namely, they are supposed to be more efficient, cheaper and safer than conventional nuclear power plants. And they are supposed to supply energy around the clock. The company I'm talking about today even wants them to be floating, meaning they are so mobile that they can be easily transported to wherever they are needed. How this is supposed to work, why SMRs are such a big topic in the first place and how one can and should view the whole thing critically, that's what we are going to talk about today and with that welcome to the German Science Guy. I'm Dr. Jakob Botton and in Germany we say Los geht's. There are many remote places in the world and it's often difficult to supply them with sufficient energy. The more remote the location, the higher the transport costs and it is difficult and expensive to continuously deliver fuel, especially for fossil fuel power plants. The solution to this problem is now said to be small modular reactors. They are supposed to be small, inexpensive and easy to transport and the fuel is supposed to last for several years without the need for refill at all. But let's start at the beginning. What are SMRs? According to the International Atomic Energy Agency, SMRs are small reactors with an electrical output of approximately 10 to 300 megawatt electrical. Individual small SMRs can even operate at less than 10 megawatt electrical. In this range, however, we are already talking about micro reactors. Incidentally, conventional reactors used in large nuclear power plants have an electrical output of around 1000 megawatt electrical. SMRs do not have a specific reactor type. Instead, research is being conducted on various reactor types that may be suitable for SMRs. The reactor found in most nuclear power plants is a light water reactor. In addition to this reactor type, high temperature and molten salt reactors are particularly suitable for SMRs. They are characterized by the fact that firstly, they are expected to supply significantly cheaper electricity than conventional nuclear power plants. Secondly, they utilize radioactive waste or produce less radioactive waste. And thirdly, they are generally expected to be safer. How exactly these advantages are achieved depends on the reactor design. And what we are taking a closer look at today is the molten salt reactor. This is the one that a company from Denmark is also researching. The company is called Saltfoss Energy. And what makes it special is not only that it is developing SMRs, but also that these SMRs are designed to float. They want to make so-called floating compact molten salt reactors a reality. In other words, power plants on ships or floating platforms that can can be flexibly transported to where energy is needed. And as mentioned, this involves a molten salt reactor. As the name suggests, such reactors run on molten salt as fuel. More specifically, the fuel, which in the case of salt is slightly enriched uranium, is mixed with a liquid salt. Uranium is very commonly used in power plants because it is naturally radioactive. But there are different variations known as isotopes of uranium. The most common uranium isotope is uranium 238 with 92 protons and 146 neutrons in its nucleus. Nuclear power plants mostly use the isotope uranium 235, which has three fewer neutrons and is particularly easy to fission. Enriching natural uranium means artificially increasing the proportion of the isotope uranium-235 in natural uranium. This enriched uranium is now mixed with a fluoride salt. This means that all of the fuel is liquid, unlike in conventional nuclear power plants, where the fuel is used in the form of solid fuel rods. And this is said to have several advantages. Firstly, the molten salt acts as both a fuel carrier and a coolant. Since salt has a higher boiling point than water, which is otherwise often used as a coolant, there is no need for increased pressure. Otherwise, higher pressure would be required because this raises the boiling temperature. With salt, it is possible to work at higher temperatures without increasing the pressure. This eliminates some accident risks and also simplifies the construction of the reactor. The second point is that even if the molten salt were to leak, there would be no danger of the radioactive material spreading uncontrollably because the molten salt would simply cool down and solidify. In addition, the reactor is designed that in the event of a malfunction, the molten salt can flow into a container where further chain reactions are impossible. Because of these advantages, SaltForce is focusing on liquid salt reactors and has already found alleys. In 2022, they entered into a partnership with South Korean shipbuilder Samsung Heavy Industries. And a year later, they partnered with Korea Hydro and Nuclear Power, the largest electricity supplier in South Korea. 
The three companies want to complete their first project, a so-called power barge, a floating power plant with a capacity of 200 megawatts. The design is scheduled to be completed in 2029 and construction is planned for 2033. Serious production is then scheduled to begin in the mid-2030s with power plants that will deliver between 200 and 800 megawatt depending on demand and have a service life of 24 years. The salt force SMRs don't just have an advantage compared to liquid salt reactors but are also said to be highly marketable. This means low upfront costs and fast implementation times. Their power plant is designed to be climate friendly since its operation does not generate any CO2 emissions at least directly, and it does not produce any nuclear waste that requires long-term storage. Instead, they say that most of the waste can be recycled or reused. And of course, in addition, flexibility is of course quite a game changer. Normally, it takes an advantage of 10 years to build a nuclear power plant and then it can no longer be moved from its location. However, if these small SMRs are now built on chips and these chips can easily travel to different locations, completely new areas can be covered with energy. But of course, it's not that simple and that's the key point because now let's take a more critical look at all of this. So let's move to the big hurdle of the video. It's the part in my video where I look at the critical points of innovation. Before we critically sink these great floating SMRs in the big hurdle, this is a joke and it works in German. I'm not sure if it's working in English, you can write it in the comments. But you're not here for the jokes, um, but maybe for the information. And if you like those, maybe you want to leave a subscription so you don't miss any more videos about tech technologies and deep dives into technologies. Okay, so let's move on with a big hurdle. Today we are focusing on four major points. First, marketability. And there's the one keyword that's crucial here, namely the technological readiness level. This divides new technologies into nine levels according to the stage of research. At level one, the project is still in the basic research stage, while at level nine, it is ready for the market. Salt force energy is currently estimated at a four, so it is still in the early stages of technological readiness. Other companies working on similar concepts are also currently at a four or a maximum of five. This raises a question of how much can be said about marketability at this stage. And I mean, the company says a lot about it, but maybe it's a little bit too early to do so. This leads directly to point number two, economic viability. Because in addition to market readiness, the product must also be worthwhile in the end. And that is of course a little more difficult to compare because there are no floating molten salt reactors yet. But let's take a look at the prices of a floating nuclear power plant in Russia that does not have a liquid salt reactor. These are relatively expensive, at least if you make a rough estimate of what the prices might be. So I did a lot of research and it's not easy to find information about that, but I read several times that the cost per megawatt hour at the Russian plant is 170 euros. In comparison, generating one megawatt hours in Germany with wind or solar power costs 40 to 90 euros. Of course, you can't make a direct comparison because there are many factors that influence prices, but in general, SMRs are said to be relatively expensive, which really contradicts the company's statements. Yes, they are smaller than conventional nuclear power plants, can be built in a modular design and therefore have shorter production times, but ultimately, they also deliver less energy. And that in turn is said to make their construction costs relatively high. According to the Federal Office for the Safety of Nuclear Waste Disposal in Germany, an average of 3,000 SMRs would have to be built to make them economically viable. At the same time, the technology is not yet mature. And that brings us to point number three, the technology. The idea of a fuel salt mixture has one major disadvantage, which is also the reason why such molten salt reactors have so far only existed as research or pilot plants. The mixture attacks the metals in the reactor. Logically, this is not good as it reduces the service life of the reactors and therefore still poses a major challenge in research. And there's one more point and in my opinion perhaps the most important one. Nuclear waste. Where should it go? This question has not yet been conclusively answered. Many companies advertise that they can recycle their radioactive waste by transmuting it. However, this process does not yet exist in its final form and in some cases actually raises even more questions. Actually, I've just been to a plant where they want to transmute. Here in Germany, I will make an English video about this too. And it's a startup that is pretty far into this topic and there are people that research about this for a very long time now, but even they are not yet at a point where they can really recycle nuclear waste. 
By the way, maybe this is also a reason why you should subscribe and activate the bell so you don't miss this video, but sorry for this advertisement. Okay, so SALTFOS doesn't directly advertise that they want to transmute their nuclear waste, but they do want to recycle it. I contacted them to find out exactly how this would work, but I didn't receive an answer to my question. They maybe didn't read the email, maybe didn't read my LinkedIn messages, or maybe they don't want to answer it. I don't know. Finally, I found one more thing that I found quite shocking. In the 1960s, there was a large-scale experiment in the USA called the Oak Ridge National Laboratory Molten Salt Reactor Experiment. In 1994, it was designated a nuclear historic landmark because it was so important but there could be another reason for this. Since it was shut down in 1969, no one knows how to dispose the molten salt. It has simply been lying there in solidified form in an unchanged reactor building for 60 years. That's totally absurd, isn't it? But let's move on to today's conclusion. I would say that there are definitely still many challenges to overcome. On the one hand, because of the molten salt reactors themselves, I've just mentioned enough points, but also because of this floating concept. In any case, the EAEA writes that there are still major legal and regulatory issues to be clarified for an international market for floating power plants. For example, it would be complicated if a power plant were built and fueled in one country and then transported across across international waters to another. In general, all of these alternative reactor concepts still raise many questions. In any case, the Federal Office for the Safety of Nuclear Waste Disposal here in Germany does not expect such concepts to achieve a cost advantage over conventional nuclear power plants and above all over renewable energies. If anything, SMRs based on the conventional light water principle seem to be more promising. I would also find it interesting to take a closer look at the UK company Rolls-Royce SMRs because I think they are leading in this area. So feel free to write me in the comments if you would also be interested in this and maybe somebody has a contact so I can even go there and look at the reactor concept they have firsthand. That would be great. If you have so, please write me an email. Okay, and here you find another video I found pretty interesting. It is about the TransRapid. It's a technology made in Germany that is now in operation in China. It has a crazy history. It is one of the fastest trains in the world and the technology behind it is very interesting. So maybe you want to take a look. And uh, yeah, I just have to say Auf Wiedersehen, which means goodbye in German. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye, your Jacob.